And I just want to give a quick message to those who have gone through the intensive. Man, God has really blessed that ministry. Uh, you know, like so many things, those who've been in ministry for a while, you just try things and you never know. I have more, way more failures than success. But, you know, you just try to hear from the Lord, let's try this, let's try this. And sometimes you're just totally off. But the intensive, man, it's it really has gone way beyond what we expected. Um, where hundreds of churches have been planted. Uh, and now it's one of those times where we feel like, gosh, we've touched with a lot of these people and and maybe you're feeling alone and I just maybe I can just give you a word of encouragement here from Hong Kong. Um, and it's fresh off of like a month of prayer. Uh, I felt like the Lord stirring something in my heart, like just, I, I think a lot of us are thinking like, I don't think we're going to return to what was normal. And I feel like we're on this, this trajectory where the world's not going to, you know, go backwards. It's just progressing into a greater and greater craziness. And, um, and so I'm just feeling like I got to do something. I got to say something, man, I don't know how much time we have left. And all these ideas flood my mind. And so I thought, okay, I don't know, this is of the Lord or me. And so I spent a month, a lot of fasting, a lot of prayer, a lot of gathering other believers together just to pray day after day and try to hear the word of the Lord. Like, and that's, I know what the word of God says, um, but I, I just felt like, I just want to see if God doesn't have a special message or something, and I don't want to miss it, because I'm looking at scripture, and I'm going, they never could have strategized and predicted what was going to happen. It, it was always crazy um, when you look at scripture. Like, no one could have predicted, uh, no one could have, uh, like, chosen that the path to the promised land. You know, like Psalm 77, 13 says, his way is holy. So you never would have guessed that. You never would have guessed Joseph's life. You never would have, you know, thought Gideon. And, you know, all these ideas, Noah, um, it's Jesus, uh, the beginnings of the church. You're not reading Acts 1 for the first time and going, oh, I know what will happen next. No, you're just going, man, they're waiting in this room and what's going to happen? What's going it, to, it's, and so why are we now like thinking, okay, I know what's going to happen next. You know, we live in a crazy time and I, I just think what is going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen today. A war could break out today. I have no clue. It's just, you know, so that's why I just thought, okay, I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to see if he doesn't say something to me and you know, and, and just like in seriousness with serious believers gathering together, like, what do you have to say to us, Lord? What do you have to say over and over day after day? And the weirdest thing was like, all of the message that we felt was from the Lord was not a me thing, you know, standing out and on the street and screaming a message or, or, or recording more messages. Everything I was hearing was like, I told you what to do. I told you that if I already have a plan that, that if you become perfectly one, the world is going to believe that the Father sent the Son. If we strive side by side together for the gospel. And it was all about us having all these methods. Let's try this. Let's try that. When Jesus, again, just made it very clear, here's my method, become perfectly one. Okay. There's, there, there aren't, we've created this really stupid thing where we feel like there's options. I don't want to be in a church that's that close. Um, so we, we make like, okay, well, I, I'm going to be in one of these churches where I just show up for an hour and and that's not an option. He commanded our love to love one another just as Christ loved me. I don't have an option, you know, with Rob and Sean, because we're the church, we're believers. I don't have an option to go, well, I just want our relationship to go this far. You know, it's, uh, 
it, it, it's almost, it's, it's exactly like what we did with Christianity, where people don't want to be those radical Christians. And I'm going, what, what option do we, did it Jesus, was it Jesus that says, well, you can either deny me, pick up your cross, follow me, hate your father, mother, brother, sister, or you can just pray a prayer and accept the Savior, or there's a bunch of choices in between. It's like, there's no option. There's one option. You, you just, you surrender your life. And, and, and something, you know, as I've been thinking about unity, I've been realizing, you know, I'm trying to be united sometimes with people who haven't surrendered their life to Jesus. That have bought this lie that there's another form of Christianity that isn't so serious that, that we can believe, just like the demons do, that Jesus did die on a cross and he is the son of God and that that's a, like a real option and we can still call that Christian. And, and so we live how winter we have limits to well you know maybe i'll i'll accept jesus as 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 my savior but um sanctification is that process of giving things over and it's like no that's not true uh sanctification is the working out but but you, there's no salvation apart from repentance and man here's my life jesus i surrender all to you and then sanctification is the process of, of working that out. It's not like, okay, I'll, I'll believe in Jesus. And then I don't know if I'm ready to give this up yet or this up or this up or this up. That is not what scripture teaches. And I'm just realizing, man, I can't be perfectly one with those who have not chosen to render their life to Jesus. And yes, there's a process of sanctification where we work that out. Because even if that's your desire, and even though you make that decision, how that works out, that's how the church works together. It's like, man, I'm, I'm afraid to give over everything and, and, and take away all barriers, but I'm going to do it. And now I need the church to help me in that process because I'm going to wrestle, I'm going to struggle. And, and so I found great unity with people along that road. But I, I guess that's why, partly why I'm speaking to you, I don't say writing to you, like it's an epistle or something, but it's, it's like, we need to be unified. For those of us who understand that Christ calls us to surrender everything and to believe we are to be perfectly one and to love each other to that degree. And we are to surrender our whole lives. Every nickel, every, every minute, it's like this is the Lord's. And we understand that. And we joyfully do that. That's to our joy to surrender our lives. We believe his commands are good. And so for those of us that God has shown us that, man, we want to be obedient and really pursue that oneness because as we all know, the, the, the church doesn't have a great reputation um, in the world, but a lot of it is because we haven't obeyed his commands. And it's just a time where we're, we're sorry if we've lost touch with some of you, um, but we see at this time in our world's history, it's time for us to really be united and encourage one another. And so if you feel alone um, and you're seeing these big events and things, and it's not that anything big is bad. I'm just saying sometimes it can get discouraging um, when you just feel like, man, I've got a dozen people in my house, if that, and but, but, but I'm pursuing this oneness and I'm pursuing this complete obedience and, and, and in humility, we're just trying to become what Christ called us to. Um, we just want you to know, man, we're, we're totally with you. And, uh, and maybe we can even connect you with people that are closer to you geographically. Um, but we want to know if there's any way that we can support you. I just want you to know, man, it was pretty cool that, and I even told the elders that we are a church, look, I don't know what God's calling to me, calling me to here in Hong Kong. It may look really different because of the time, because of the location, 
And after like a month of prayer, it's like, no, uh, this is exactly what I called you to still. Um, there's no plan B. It is this type of church um, that will be unstoppable. And this is what's going to convince the church that Jesus, the world, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <laughs>